John Lott, a gun rights advocate and the president of the Crime Prevention Research Center. He joins me now from Las Vegas. Thanks for being on the program with us, John. Now, I just want to read a quote from a book that you wrote uh, titled More Guns, Less Crime. And the quote is, um, the Batman movie theater killer James Holmes initially considered attacking an airport. In his diary, which was released in 2015, he explained his decision against targeting the airport because of substantial security. 23, he then selected the only theater within 20 minutes of his apartment that banned permitted concealed handguns. Now, John Holmes was said to be mentally ill, but he was legally sane. Do you think that if he didn't have that gun that day, that he would be able to execute that mass shooting? Well, guns make it easier, obviously, for people to go and kill lots of people, but there are lots of ways. I mean, you've had bombing attacks in Turkey. You've had bombing attacks in many other places around the world. The problem that you have is that even when you ban guns, you see people who want to go and kill, if they're really serious about this and planning these things long in advance, able to get the weapons to be able to go and do that. I mean, look around the world. Every place that's banned either all guns or all handguns has seen an increase in murders. There's, you'd think out of randomness, you'd find one place where guns are banned, where murder rates went down, and yet every, or even stay the same at least. But yet in every single case, you've seen murder rates go up, often by substantial amounts. And you, know, you look at a country like Mexico, for example, had extremely strict gun control regulations, only one gun store in the country since uh, 1972. Uh, less than 1% of the adult population is even legally licensed to own a gun. And yet Mexico has a murder rate that's six times higher than what we have here in the United States. Uh, you know, look at Brazil. Brazil, only two-tenths of one percent of the adult population is legally licensed to own a gun. And yet Brazil also has a murder rate that's six times higher than what we have here in the United States. So, John, so, I mean, be sorry, I'm going to interrupt you there. So why do you think that the amount of mass shootings increased in the year of 2019? Well, a lot of these shootings involve drug gangs. Uh, you know, it, it'd be nice if you could go and stop drug gangs from getting illegal drugs, uh, but it's just as hard to stop them from getting the weapons that they need to go and protect that very valuable property. It's not like a drug gang can go to the police and say, look, this other drag, gang stole our drugs, can you help us get them back? They have weapons to be able to protect that. It's the reason why Mexico, even though they have very few legally owned guns, has a lot of weapons there, and they are bringing in even rocket launchers and other things from around the world. I mean, the government there over five years has, has collected something like 13,000 grenades uh, that they've confiscated. So, you know, it'd be nice to be able to stop illegal drugs from coming into the, uh, countries, but it's just as hard to stop uh, those gangs from getting the weapons that they need to protect that valuable property. Okay, so John, you've made your point there, more guns, less crime, but do you think that guns should be so easy to access where someone can just walk into a Walmart and purchase a gun off the counter? Well, they just can't walk into a Walmart and purchase a gun off the counter. They have to go through a criminal background check that's there. And, uh, you know, if you have any type of criminal record, if you have been, uh, for involuntary commitment for mental illness, uh, you and other reasons, you are banned from being able to go and legally obtain a gun. Now, we try to ban people from getting illegal drugs. Uh, and yet, uh, the major source of illegal guns in the United States are drug dealers. So it's just as easy to go and buy a gun illegally as it is to obtain illegal drugs. Okay. so. We know that the Trump administration isn't bringing stricter gun reforms at this stage. What is the U.S. government doing to combat mass shootings at this point? Well, I mean, they're trying to do things like identify individuals before they go and engage in these types of attacks. Uh, look at some of the reforms that had occurred during the Obama administration that the Trump administration is trying to undo. So, for example, uh, the Parkland school shooting. 
uh, the person had, uh, the police had visited his home something like 45 times, but they hadn't arrested him. The school had been very concerned about different types of activities, threats, and other things that he had made against other people. But the policy was you weren't going to arrest young minorities because you didn't want to go and create a criminal record. Well, there are lots of times where he, he should have been stopped, that mm -hmm. he, he should have been identified beforehand. Those are some of the things that are being changed right now. But the big thing that you have, and you mentioned this in the quote that you had earlier, is that these mass shooters keep on picking targets where victims aren't able to defend themselves. They pick these gun-free zones. 95% of the mass public shootings in the United States occur in places where law-abiding citizens, general citizens, are banned from having guns. All these right. killers make crazy in some sense, but they're not stupid. They pick targets where they know the victims can't defend themselves. Okay, John Lott, we're going to have to leave it there for now. But thank you so much for joining us on the program today. That's John Lott joining us from Las Vegas.